Hi everyone, John here, kx 4 You know, the world is all about bandwidth. Cellular providers are paying billions of dollars for as much bandwidth as they can to bring you what you want, which is high-speed internet and other good things. I figured we'd take some time to go back in time to the simplest of modulations, AM, and uh, have a look at what it requires to bring you an adequate signal versus something better. So here I have my SDR console hooked up to both an antenna and a signal generator. And right now I'm going to turn it on. It is a carrier at 1420 kilohertz, which is no coincidence a local radio station, which we'll listen to shortly. But right now it's carrier only. And you can see that it's about minus 43 dBm, which is exceptionally strong signal in the radio world. But that's what the uh, radio station comes in on, so that's what I set my signal generator to as well. So, amplitude modulation, of course, has the central carrier, but the information that it conveys is placed into sidebands that depend on frequency. And I'll start right now with a 400 hertz tone at 2 or 3 percent modulation. But you can see even at that small value you see those two significant sidebands. They are in fact at plus and minus 400 hertz. You can't really tell with the uh, meter here but if I shrink the bandwidth considerably down to 2.5 kilohertz nothing changes except the noise drops a little bit. We've narrowed the noise gathering bandwidth of the uh, demodulator but the tones still come through. If we keep shrinking, you'll keep hearing the tones until finally we reach a point where the bandwidth is too narrow. It lets the carrier through, but the information in the sidebands is required to make it through the passband to give us our tone. So let's go back out a little bit and change the tone to 1 kilohertz. So, as you know, in amplitude modulation, it's the frequency of the audio that determines how far from the carrier it is, in this case 1 kilohertz. Now our bandwidth is too small, so we drag it out a little bit. And now we got it. 1 kilohertz. And we keep going, no difference, only when we get too narrow do we no longer capture the sideband and thus the, uh, the information conveyed by the radio signal. So with that in mind, let's set it to 2.5 kilohertz. Turn that off. Let's go listen to the live radio station. About the same signal strength, which is again, it's about 7 miles north of here and it booms in. My ham friends who live near it, they don't like it. But I like the music here. I always grew up as a rock and roll kid, but Motown and, and things like that are pretty cool. Anyway, 2.5 kilohertz and maybe 3 kilohertz are sufficient bandwidth to convey the human voice. That's why that's what you see limited to in the various voice comms, HTs, CB radios, what have you. But if your ears are as good as mine, although mine are getting up in years, you can tell that this sounds muffled. And of course, AM broadcast stations are on 10 kilohertz centers. So you would think that there would be a limit of plus or minus 5 kilohertz to make everyone fit. Indeed, if we go to 5 kilohertz, it does sound better. We get more of the high frequency content, which yields a higher fidelity signal. But still, it's not too terribly awesome compared to other music formats. But you can see that there's energy well out past 5 kilohertz, and sure enough in the United States, broadcasters can be broader than plus or minus 5 kilohertz and interfere with their neighboring stations. This harkens back to a time when all music was played on AM radio, which is exactly what you're seeing right here with this local radio station. So let's go to 7 kilohertz. 
sounds a whole lot better now, doesn't it? Eight kilohertz. Yep. Better and better. And let's go all the way to ten. That's the energy that they're transmitting. And we can see that if you can capture and use more bandwidth and radio spectrum, the fidelity of your signal gets higher. But in other contexts, in the cellular world, the more bandwidth you have, the faster your internet will be. So this is slightly analogous, but this simple AM modulation helps us see how, uh, how important it is. Where bandwidth is important for music, you've got to have lots of it. For communications, not so much. For audio communication, voice communications. But it all depends on what you're after. Thanks for listening. This is John KX4L.